Hi, my name is Galen from Toadspool Tailoring, and today I will be showing you how to make a spider or a reinforced area at the bottom of the slit of a early modern shirt. Here you can see an example, and I'll give you a little bit better close up later, of a 16th century shirt, which I've already made one on. And I'm gonna walk you through the steps as I work on a very early 18th century shirt I'm working on right now. Now these spider's webs, um, at least the one that I'm working on, is made of both wrapped thread and buttonhole knotted thread. And as we go through, you'll see how both of these are used together to create the spider's web. So here we are looking at a close-up of the 16th century shirt that I've been working on. This spider is based off of one that's found in Patterns of Fashion 4 on a shirt from the 1620s. Um, so how this is made up is there is a main worked bar of buttonhole stitches along the top, and then what I like to do is go around the entire bottom with buttonhole stitches, and this finishes off this bottom edge. Now, I already hem the bottom edge, as close to the bottom as I can, and you can even roll the bottom to get a completely finished edge, but I still like to go over this with buttonhole stitches because it just holds up better and it increases the longevity of the garment. Now, this inside bit is all made of strands of thread that I've then proceeded to wrap with the leftover thread. So I would take a stitch between here and here and then go ahead around that a whole bunch of times. And this is being done with waxed linen thread. So that's generally how this is done. I'm going to make the similar style version of this on this white linen over here. Now the materials you'll need to do a worked um, buttonhole on the bottom is you're really going to want to work with linen thread. When stitching any kind of linen shirt or linen garment, I really like to match the fiber content. And it really just gets us closer to weaving the shirt pieces together one strand at a time with the thread. So by matching the thread, especially linen thread, you're really going to get a better result with the look of your worked bar. So I get my thread from Burnley and Trowbridge, and this is really lovely stuff. It is a delight to work with. Once you have your thread, it is essential to wax it. If you're doing double thread like I am here, it just holds them together and it helps it glide through the fabric a little more easily. When waxing your thread, you always want to press it. This will remove any excess wax from the thread and force the wax into the fibers, impregnating it. You don't want to skip out on this step. You can see the staining on the fabric here. That will happen to your garment if you don't do this now. And finally, I like to work with a thimble. It allows me to work faster and it saves my fingers because I sew all day long. So I've got my shirt in front of me, we're looking at the wrong side, and I've already put a narrow hem on both sides of the slit. And at the very bottom, I've even rolled it a little bit to completely finish off this edge, even though we'll be covering that with buttonhole stitching in just a little bit. So working from the wrong side, what I like to do is I like to hide the knot on my thread underneath the hem that I have established. And just by giving it a little tension, that knot slides right underneath and you've got a nice finished area right there. I've used these pins to mark where I want this bar tack at the very top to be. And I'm taking maybe a sixteenth of an inch stitch into the material. Collecting my pins. <laughs> You just want all these 
these threads to have the same kind of tension and decide about how far apart you want. This is maybe a little less than half an inch. I'll probably do one more stitch to get a whole bunch of threads. This will be very strong. And now we've got our threads together. So I'm going to turn this over and start working from the front. Now we are working from the front and you can see I've got a few stitches all bundled together and they're all pulled to the same length. I'm going to start my first buttonhole stitch by passing my needle underneath and wrapping the thread the direction that I'm traveling. So I'm traveling this way, that's the direction I will wrap my thread. And that's your first buttonhole stitch. And then you just work down the line. Now that I've finished the bar tack across the top of the slit, I'm going to pass my needle through the knot and the hem and come out right underneath. And this will keep my buttonhole knot at the top and get my needle right at the right position to continue buttonholes all the way around the bottom until I get to the other side. So I've just finished working all the way around this bottom opening, and I'm just going to pass my thread to the back because I probably don't have enough thread to do the rest of the spider web on the inside, but I have a trick for that. So we're just going to pass our needle all the way through to the back, and then I'm going to do a little small knot. and then take this thread and pass it underneath all those little buttonhole stitches you just did. The idea is that that excess will be held underneath and you won't see your little thread tail. I cannot find my little scissors. I have found my little scissors. So we're just gonna trim this and give this a press before moving on. yourself up another length of thread. I'll probably end up using something around 16 inches and we'll finish working the rest of this inside bit.
I'm going to create a bar from here to here. And how I'm going to do that is I'm going to take a stitch underneath that little hem and through the stitches I've already made to the middle of this bar. The goal always being to hide your, your knots. And then I'll find a little place to anchor at the bottom and take that stitch. It does not have to look neat or tidy just yet. probably take three stitches, I think. That'll just give me a nice bit of loft to stitch onto. I think it'll make it a little easier. And there we go, we have another bundle of thread. I'm just twisting it together with my fingers helps. I'm gonna flip this over and start working from the face again. Now all I'm gonna do is work my way down this bar by making loops. Once you get into the swing of things, it goes a little faster, but I want to make sure these first few are nice and even and don't overlap each other and just sit nice and flush. You can already see what's coming along and I'll work my way down here. Now that I've reached the bottom, I'm going to travel underneath the buttonhole stitches to my next spot, which will be somewhere, uh, probably one more stitch here. And I'm going to be making like a little X and I'm going to try to make this stitch right through my bundle of thread. Bingo. And then go right back to where I came out, just like that. And now I'm gonna go ahead and keep wrapping. And I will do this again here, here, and here to make a little X. So my camera died during that filming, but I went ahead and finished the spider using the techniques that I was using beforehand. And basically, I just worked my way around this center pillar, stitching here, wrap, 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 then over here, wrap, 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 to the center, then over here, and I wrapped to the end, traveled underneath here, came out here, and did my final bar tack here, and then I tied it off underneath. You can tidy this up. I'm just gonna give it a quick press. And we're done. I'm gonna use the Taylor's ham as a bit of a clapper to just set that press. There you go. And that is it. That is how you make an early modern shirt spider. There you can see the finished thing. And this will add just a beautiful little bit of reinforcing to help your shirt last a long, long time. If you're taking the time to hand make yourself a shirt, Doing all these little steps to reinforce the bits that are fragile will pay off in the long run. I hope you found this video entertaining, maybe even a little educational. I hope you learned something. And um, if you would like to see more of these, let me know. Leave a comment and give this video a thumbs up. Thank you.